it not, not ever built, that's not true, that got into a knockdown, drag out brawl. It was a Confederate ship. The, the, the Confederacy built it during the Civil War. It had 10 guns. It was covered with four inch thick iron plating. Its casemate, which is the, the, you know, this top part here, was two feet thick. It was made of oak and pine in several layers. And then on top of that, it was topped with additional layers of iron plating, and it was angled at 36 degrees so the cannonballs hit it. It, it, just, it wasn't just hitting iron, it was hitting iron at an angle. In March of, eight, in March of that year, at a place called the Battle of Hampton Roads. During the Civil War, the Union had blockaded the South in order to stop trade and deprive them of access of certain needed war materials. These are the ships that were blockading, or some of the ships. These were frontline Union warships. The USS Cumberland was a 50-gun frigate. The USS Congress was a 52-gun frigate. And the USS Minnesota was a 44-gun steam frigate, 10 guns. The Virginia showed up in the morning, took on the Cumberland and sunk, destroyed it. Frontline warship, slapped their hands together, took on another one. The US Congress deliberately, the captain deliberately ran it aground. But these guys kept firing at it and virtually destroyed it anyways. And eventually, the Congress surrendered. By the time it got toward the end of the day, it was starting to get dark, the Virginia took on the Minnesota and was going to do the same to it. And because it was dark, they didn't have much time, the captain of the Minnesota actually deliberately grounded his ship in order to save <coughs> Frontline ships. The Battle of Hampton Roads actually lasted two days. But we just saw what happened on day one. On day two, the Monitor showed up. The Monitor was the first ironclad produced by the Union Navy. It had two guns. It also had 47 patentable inventions. This thing was a marvel. Europe watched in worried fascination. From the moment these two ships opened fire that Sunday morning, every other navy on Earth was obsolete. <coughs> these are frontline warships of non-American countries. This is, the, this is the French Navy. These are two of the, two of the frontline French warships at that time. There was 131 guns here. The 90-gun Napoleon, this was the first steamer in, in a warship that the French had. This was their frontline ship. This was the British Duke of Wellington. 140 guns, triple decker. Because the old paradigm was that you measured naval warfare in terms of the quantity of guns. That's the paradigm. The more guns you have, the more you can blast away and do damage. At Hampton Roads that day, these two ships showed up. This guy had 10 guns, and that guy had two on a turret that rotated. The, the, the turret would spin around. Let me read this again. Europe watched in worried fascination. From the moment these two ships opened fire that Sunday morning, every other navy on earth was obsolete. Think of this in terms of what you guys are doing. Like just think of some of the things that you're involved with. What this did was it changed the paradigm of naval warfare. The basis upon which you measured what you do and how you took on an opponent changed. A paradigm shift. All right. Let me get you to just pass those down. Should I just keep one and pass them down? Have you got some pencils or pens, Pat? Yeah. Keep one, everybody, and pass them down, please. This is the workshop part. We just learned about paradigm. Anybody do you get one? 
and there's actually two above here. There's a, a line in the middle. But on the two above, let me ask you to do this. If anybody doesn't have a pen, just put your hand up and paddle. Be sure to get you one or a pencil. Using four straight lines. Four, only four. Straight, pen, be bent. Straight. Using four straight lines. Without lifting your pen or pencil off the paper. No cheating. Connect all nine dots. And you'll notice that two copies of the same image are there, one on the left and one on the right, so that if you don't get it the first time, you can try again. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you about a minute. We'll just take a pause and have a drink of water, and, uh, or uh, Sam and I will, and uh, I'll just leave you alone for a minute. Four lines, join all nine dots, don't lift your pen as long as the I'll give you a hint, it can be done. <laughs> We're not asking you to do something impossible. Four lines, join all nine dots, straight lines. Don't lift your pen or pencil off the paper. You gotta think outside the nine dot box. Are you gonna humiliate those of us who don't get it? <laughs> I'm going to grab a cup of water and then we'll start running. There's actually some bottled water, water there. Oh, is there? Yeah. <coughs> if anybody wants to call water and coffee, it's ready to go. No, no, I did not.